Welcome back, forensic students. Today we are talking about the microscope. So in a previous lesson, we went through some different lab equipment that we'll see this year in the forensics classroom. And I told you when we got to the microscope that we would expand on that information. And so today is that day. Um, so we're going to go through the different parts of the microscope, the function of those parts, and then some rules for using the microscope. All right, now the compound light microscope is what we use in the classroom. Um, and it's called a compound light microscope because it uses two lenses. So the way it works is light passes through a sample, which we call a specimen, and it creates an image. And this image is magnified through the light that passes through the objective lens. So it passes through the objective lens first, and then it moves through what's called an eyepiece, and it reaches your eye as a magnified image. So altogether, these different parts work to magnify, and we have different magnifications depending on the objective lens that we use and depending on the type of microscope that we use. Now, most classroom microscopes all work the same way. Um, there might be some differences between what I talked to you about today and the microscope that you will be using, um, but typically all science classrooms, all science students, um, even if you're a homeschool cohort, use microscopes that are similar in function and parts. So there are several different parts to the microscope. We're going to go through each part. We're going to talk about the function and the purpose of those parts. So we're going to start with the eyepiece, which is at the top of the microscope. Um, sometimes it's called the ocular lens, so it has both names are interchangeable. And this is a place where the specimen is viewed. You also have the body tube. You can see that in the picture. So the body tube does not really have a purpose other than it moves that magnified image up to the eyepiece. It also provides some distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece um, so that they're not so close together. All right, the next part is the revolving nose piece, and it's called a revolving nose piece because it revolves. You can rotate it, so you can manually move it to change um, between your dip different objective lenses. And typically, your microscopes have three objective lenses. Um, so we're going to, I know at the, in this picture, this particular picture, it only appears that there are two objective lenses because there's one just kind of hiding out. Um, but typically you have three or four objective lenses and they range anywhere from four times or 4x to 4x, 40x, which means 40 times the original size of the specimen. Um, so you have low, medium, and high power objective. Low power objective magnifies four times the original size, and it's the shortest objective lens. And then medium power objective is going to magnify 10 times the original size of the specimen. Um, and it is, of course, the medium length one. And then the high power objective is the longest one, and it magnifies the greatest amount, which is typically 40 times the original size of the specimen. All right, the next piece that we're going to talk about is the stage, and it actually holds the slide. So when we talked about lab equipment, we talked about the slide is like a rectangular clear piece. Um, and so on the stage, there's a window, and the light passes upward from the light source through the diaphragm, through to the stage, through the specimen, um, into the objective lens, up the body tube, and then, of course, through the eyepiece. The diaphragm is the part of the microscope that's just under the stage. Um, and the purpose of the diaphragm is it regulates how much light is available to pass through the specimen. So you can actually turn or adjust the diaphragm depending on your needs. Now the arm is just a support system for the microscope. This is how we hold our microscopes when we want to transport our microscopes. So in just a little bit, I'm going to tell you that the rule is to always hold your microscope by the arm, which is on the side, and the base. So both the arm and the base are the supports for the microscope. This is how we transport and carry our microscopes. 
Right, on the top of the stage, we have something called stage clips. And these stage clips help to hold our specimen in place on the stage while we're viewing the specimen. It just kind of secures whatever it is that we're trying to look at. Then you have the light source. The light source is at the bottom of the microscope. It shines upward through the diaphragm towards the stage um, so that that light can be picked up and then moved through and magnified through the objective lenses and the eyepiece. On the side of the microscope, you have the fine adjustment knob and the coarse adjustment knob. And this is in different locations depending on um, the microscope that you have or that you're using. But the fine adjustment knob is usually the smaller of the two. And the purpose is to fine tune the focus. So you can actually use this to just kind of crisp up the image. Um, and it can be used with all of the objective lenses. You also have the course adjustment knob. The course adjustment knob is usually the larger of the two, and you can turn it to move the stage up and down. So if I want to, um, this is going to help me clarify my image or make my image visible to the eye as I'm looking through the eyepiece. Um, and if I want to make my image where I can see it a little better, I might choose to move the stage up a little bit or down a little bit. Um, the only thing with the course adjustment knob is you can only use it when you are using the low and medium power objective lens. You can never use the, the course adjustment knob with the high power objective because remember, that's the longer objective lens. It practically touches the stage. So if you go to move the stage up and you have the high objective lens set, you might crack the objective lens itself or the, the stage or the specimen slide. Um, so it's just not good housekeeping practices. We don't want to have to replace any lenses. So course adjustment knob can be used with low and medium power objective, but never with high power objective. Okay, so let's talk about calculating magnification because I mentioned that you actually look through the microscope, you look at the, the specimen through what's called the ocular lens or the eyepiece. It has a magnification on its own of 10 times the original size of the specimen or 10x. So you can see that on this chart. Now, when you pair the eyepiece with an objective lens, then you get a total magnification. So depending on the objective lens that you use, you can have different magnifications with any one microscope. So the way we get that total magnification is we multiply. So you'll take the magnification of the eyepiece, which is 10. You're going to multiply it by the magnification of the objective lens, which for the low power objective is 4. For the medium power objective is 10. And then for the high power objective is 4. 40. You'll multiply those to get the total magnification. So for the high power objective, 4 times 10 is 40 times the original size. And then if you're using the medium power objective, that's going to be 100 times the original size. And then if you choose to use the high power magnification, in this case, it's going to be 400 times the original size of the specimen, which is pretty magnified. Sometimes that's a little too much magnification. All right, so just some housekeeping practices, some things to remember when we use the microscope. Always carry the microscope by the arm and the base. Never just by the arm, never just by the base, never by the cord. Always arm and base. Always start viewing a specimen with low power objective. And then if you need to magnify a little more, you can move to high power objective and then move to, um, excuse me, to medium power and then to high power. Um, that's just a good rule of thumb because it takes a little while to figure out how to use a microscope. And a lot of times students will just say, oh, I want this re really magnified. So I'm going to start with high power objective. And it takes forever to get it into focus. So if you'll start with low power objective and then work your way up, it makes the process much easier. 
You'll also want to adjust the diaphragm to ensure that light's passing through the specimen. Uh, sometimes if you're not able to view your specimen or if it looks really dark, sometimes just a simple adjustment of the diaphragm will help. You always want to clean the microscope with what's called lens paper. And your teacher will show you what that is, but lens paper is a special paper that we use to um, clean the glass of our microscope. You should never use a paper towel or like your shirt or anything else other than lens paper. When you get finished with the microscope, it's good housekeeping to always return your objective lens to low power. Because remember, somebody's going to come behind you and they're going to start their viewing on low power. So it's good to just kind of leave it the way the next person that uses it will need it. You'll want to ensure that your slides are removed from the microscope when you're finished using it and the cord is wrapped around the microscope neatly and securely. Um, we don't want anybody to trip over a cord when they're trying to place it back, back in the microscope cabinet or shelf. You'll want to use a dust cover over the microscope so when you get finished with it, we're going to put a dust cover over it and that just keeps the microscope protected. Always lower the stage before you put the microscope away. Remember, that's going to be with the course adjustment knob. So you want to turn that knob till the stage goes down as low as it'll go. We want to keep our microscope clean. So we don't want to put um, globs of stuff on there or put any sort of specimen on the microscope stage without using um, like a cover slip or a microscope slide. Just make sure that you're very careful with our microscopes. They are not cheap. Make sure that it's covered with a dust cover when not in use. Don't use the course adjustment knob with the high power objective lens. We've talked about why. Don't put specimens directly on the stage. Make sure that you use a prepared slide or a uh, microscope slide. Don't touch the lenses with your hands or with other objects. Let's do a quick practice um, of the different parts because for a quiz, you may have to identify these parts of the microscope. So you can either pause the video now and number one to 14 and just kind of write down the different parts or you can just go along with me and say them out loud. All right, so number one, is the body tube. Number two, this is your revolving nose piece. Number three, it's kind of hard to tell between three and four which is low power and which is medium power. So we're just going to say number three is low power objective lens. Remember, it typically has a magnification of 4x, but that is different from the total magnification, remember. Number four, medium power objective, and then number five is going to be high power objective. Medium power objective typically has a, um, a magnification of 10x. High power is going to be 40x. Number six, these are our stage clips. Number seven is the diaphragm. Number eight is the light source. Number nine, this is the ocular lens or the eyepiece. Number 10 is the arm, 11 is your stage, 12 is the course adjustment knob, remember it lowers the stage and raises the stage, 13 is the fine adjustment knob, and then number 14 is the base. Alright, that ends our lesson for today.